All right, so here we go again. Um, welcome back to the last video in the series of videos on the type system PostgreSQL. So that would be the final video in the chapter three series of the advanced SQL course. And it's actually not so much about a particular type, but it's about a very convenient way to generate values of a particular type. So let's see what's going on here. I would like to briefly talk about sequences. Sequences are system maintained counters, so they're system maintained integer values. By default, that would be an uh, integer eight value, so an integer value of eight bytes that can assume the range of values that I've indicated here on the slides. Okay, and a sequence keeps track of the current state of the counter and comes with operations that advance that counter in a controlled fashion, uh, wrap around the counter in a controlled fashion, increment the counter by a defined amount, will keep control about the counter value and will not let it exceed a particular minimum maximum value. So it's all very uh, convenient and a very sophisticated maintenance of counter values. Uh, such sequences are created in SQL using the create sequence syntax. Such a sequence the, um, uh, is assigned a name, which we then later can use to query the sequence and to manipulate its counter value. When we create such a sequence, a number of sequence options, a number of configurations options for the, uh, for the counter can be specified. For example, the increment value. So when some value is being uh, uh, requested from the sequence, the current counter state is being incremented by this amount, uh, by this amount to um, to generate the next counter value. There are bounds defined on such a counter value, if you want, uh, and these bounds uh, will limit the counter value to the given minimum maximum values. All right, so by default, by default, the minimum would be one, and by maximum would be the maximum would be the maximum numeric positive numeric value that you can represent in the in the counter's base numeric type. But uh, you can be more specific and request tighter bounds. For example, you can define a start value for that counter, and you can define whether the counter should be a wraparound counter that uh, does not error out when it reaches its max value, and uh, if it's defined to be a cyclic, a cyclic sequence, then after we've reached the max value and would exceed it, we switch back to the minimum value of the counter. So it's really a round robin wraparound counter that we can define here. So if you don't provide a start value uh, for a counter with a positive increment, we would start at the minimum value. For a counter with a maximum increment, with a negative increment, we would start at the maximum value. But all of this behaves probably as you would expect it. All right, so we could generate such sequences manually and use the create sequence keyword, but um, there's also the possibility to let the system create such counters for you and then query extract the current counter value for you in just the right moment. And this is very handy when it comes to the generation of keys, of key values for rows. Uh, we have often found ourselves, for example, in the playground table, to uh, manually generate key values. Um, the A column in the playground table has assumed the role of being the identity for the rows, and we were generating A values one, two, three, and so on, and assigned these manually to the uh, particular rows of the playground table. We could have done that differently, and we could have defined one of the columns of the table to be of integer type or some numeric type, as we've uh, mentioned above, and annotated with generated always as identity. And this is really self-describing. So uh, the values in the C column will always be generated by the system automatically. We are not allowed to specify these values ourselves. And they will be generated in a way so that they are usable to uniquely identify each of the rows that are inserted in, the, in table T. So we are relieved from the burden from inventing key values ourselves and can let the system implement these key value generation for us automatically. And of course, behind the scenes, what's happening here is that from this 
declaration of the table T with column C that is using this identity functionality, uh, behind the scenes a sequence is being generated f for table T on column C and this is just a suffix here. So uh, this would be the automatically generated sequence and uh, whenever we insert columns into the table this sequence would be queried to generate the next key value that we then can uh, that will then be inserted into column C for us and we don't need to bother about key generation at all. That's quite handy. Okay. These these uh, uh, plenty of options uh, that you can uh, attach to the create sequence command, you, they could also be create uh, attached to this generated always as identity uh, declaration so that you have some control about the key values that are actually being generated for you. So once we've got such a sequence in our hands, what can we do with it? Well, there is not, not much that we can do. We can, of course, query its current state, the current counter state, and then control its counter value by advancing it or by resetting it. And this is actually what is provided by uh, PostgreSQL and its SQL uh, functionality. So let's assume that we have generated this particular sequence. So the sequence is called SEQ and we started at value 41 and its max value is 100 where it then should cycle back, back around. All right, okay. So um, to its minimum value, actually, which would be by default one. Okay, so um, uh, if we would start out the, the querying of this, uh, of this sequence, then the first next val operation would request the current, the current state of the sequence, which would be 41, and it, it would emit the value 41. So this expression has the value 41 but it also has the side effect of internally incrementing the counter of the SEQ sequence so that the next next while call will then automatically generate 42. We can also inquire the current state of the current counter value without incrementing it and we would just use the current value function for that. We can also set the current value, value of the function uh, of the sequence SEQ to 100 for example and would then on the next call to to uh, to next value uh, be seeing the value after that uh, uh, after the value 100 because we have defined a cycling sequence it would cycle back to its minimum value of 1 if you would have expected a value of 100 here i can understand that and we can actually enforce that i will show you in the in the uh, sample editor session that we are going to, going to start in a second. Please uh, uh, note, note that uh, these sequence value names are just string values in, in SQL. They are not really first class names that you can compute or what uh, um, that you uh, that you can otherwise specify. You have to specify the sequence names as literal string values when you call the next set and current value functions. This is due to a deficiency in SQL where names are not first class. Okay. And uh, generated always as identity is, uh, is doing exactly what you expect it to do. It will create such a sequence behind the back for you. And whenever a row is inserted into the associated table, the automatically the automatically uh, um, an invocation of next val is performed for the sequence uh, so that the next key value is being generated and then automatically inserted for you into the table okay so let's see how this works in practice over to the editor here you can see that i will just generate such a sequence seq uh, but let's drop it first if it already exists uh, my playing around earlier will probably have created such a sequence. So let's remove it and then recreate it with exactly the configuration parameters that we've seen on the slides. There you go. There is our sequence. Okay. And now we can query it. So uh, because we have not advanced the counter yet, the next valve function will yield uh, 41. And the counter will be internally incremented to yield 42 on the next next while call. There you go. The current value will be 42 now. 
okay we can set the current value to 100 and internally the, the the sequence is now configured to yield the next value after 100 on the next next while call because we need to cycle back after max value 100 to the minimum default value 1 in this case the next call will deliver a 1 for us all right so such sequences are internally represented as regular tables so when we create a sequence using this create sequence statement behind the back a table is being generated a table called sequence just like the sequence itself uh, a table is being generated and that table is used to hold the current state of the counter and other configuration information of the sequence we can actually inquire that table so just using a table seq here will yield the current state of our sequence so the last value that has been generated was one and uh, this value has already been emitted had already been used by the sequence user this is what this is called flag is indicating so one is the current value but it has already been given to the user so on the next next while call we need to increase the counter value and will probably yield a two here okay so the set wall the set wall call that we've used already in the uh, in the above example is actually able to also manipulate this is call field so if we use this particular variant of the set wall call then we again will set the current value of the sequence to 100 but uh, the is called modifier or, or flag is set to false so the 100 is not considered to be already given to the user of the sequence and the next next one call will thus generate the 100 so there you go 100 and that's uh, the value of the set while function okay and as a side effect of course we have modified the internal state of the sequence and the let next sec next wall call will just generate the 100 before we then wrap around to one again all right okay so as the final bit the demonstration of the generated always as identity functionality so the automatic generation of sequences behind the back behind the curtains for us that the system will then automatically use to populate key columns okay so uh, let's De define a table a variant of our playground table t a self-conscious t that uh, is able to generate r identities for its rows on its own okay so everything stays the same we know these four columns already but we add another column the me column self-conscious t the me column that will produce integer key column values automatically drawn from a sequence that is automatically created when we declare the table all right let's declare the table so not only this table has been declared but uh, behind the scenes there is a sequence being declared that is called like the table underscore key column underscore suffix seq let's see what we find there okay it's indeed there and the last value or the current value of the sequence is currently one which has not been handed out to the user of the sequence so we can expect the first key value to be generated for us when we insert into self-conscious t to be one so let's do that let's perform such an insert into self-conscious t but you see the column me is missing it has to be missing the system will generate a value we are not allowed to generate a value on our own generated always as identity really means what it's saying we are not in control of the identity or the key column values the system will take care of it so we specify only the four remaining column values here and let's do that okay done let's insert another value done okay so let's see about the current state of our self-conscious table t yes nice so automatically 
identities have been assigned, drawn from the sequence that has been uh, declared behind our backs. Let's see, this is the sequence. And its current state would be at value 2, which has already been handed out to us because it's being used in this table as identity already. All right. This also works in more complex uh, insert statements like this one. You see, again, the me column is missing. It has to be missing. Key generation is automatically by the system. But what values are being generated? What values are being generated? Um, so stuff is inserted in the self-conscious T table, and we are not in control about what is being inserted here. This is by design, but there is a modifier that is seldomly known by SQL users to the insert statement, which is the returning modifier. And the returning modifier is a list of expressions, as you can see here, a comma separate list of expressions that is evaluated for each of the rows that is being inserted into the self-conscious T table. So we are inserting three rows here. So these comma separated uh, expressions will be evaluated three times. And they will, of course, be evaluated under the binding of the current row. So we inserted this row with a C value of true. Uh, so C will be true. But we are also outputting me here. So we will see the automatically generated counter value that is drawn from the sequence for us. And we will see all the counter values and all the Boolean values in the C column because of this returning clause, which could include actually arbitrary expressions here. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so two things have happened. We had uh, the insert side effect on the table. Zero rows have been rejected, three have been inserted, but we are also getting a query result, the evaluation of this comma separated value list on the three rows. And uh, because we're including column E, we can see which identities have been automatically drawn from the sequence. Okay, so what we're ending up with is the self-conscious T table with has five columns, of which four we have inserted. One has been provided by the system, and you see the values follow the increment of the sequence that lives behind the scenes, the behind the scenes of the generate always as identity declaration. So that's about it. That's chapter two on type chapter three uh, on the types in PostgreSQL and the support for types in PostgreSQL. I hope you found that interesting. And uh, this is some is, uh, a kind of fundamental, fundamental and, and foundational chapter in this uh, course, because we will now build on top of this and draw interesting examples now that we have all the geometric types, the JSON stuff, uh, the bit strings, the byte array stuff, and so on. All of this is a nice playground provided to us to explore further concepts of advanced SQL. And uh, without further ado, switch over to the next video that I will be uh, recording in the next few days uh, to continue our exploration of SQL. Hope to see you there then. Bye-bye.